to share the word of God this morning but she's not here so I, I, I ask everyone that while I share the word just pray for me so that the Jesus will be exalted will be glorified and each one of us will be blessed by the message of his word so let's pray hallelujah Lord, thank you for your awesome manifest presence, Lord, in our midst uh, this morning. Thank you for your word that tells us, Lord, that nothing happened in our lives by chance, by coincidence, or accident, Lord God. To those who love you and to those who are called according to your purpose, O oh God. And your primary purpose to each one of us, Lord is to be more and more like Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace and your mercy that is fresh and new every morning, O God. And your Holy Spirit, O God, who is continually at work to encourage us, to strengthen us, Lord God, and to uphold us, Lord God, by your loving hands. Bless your people today. As we listen to your word, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So if you have the Bible, please open with me in First Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, this Sunday we will have communion. Right? We will have communion. So that's why. Uh, so the title of God's message this morning, The Institution of the Lord's Supper. The institution of the Lord Supper, because this is a uh, communion. So we will study why we need to uh, partake the Lord's Supper as often as we can. Okay, and this is the to partake the Lord's Supper to remember what the Lord has done on the cross for us. Uh, according to the Bible, is not an option. It's not a suggestion, but it is. A command. So here in First Corinthians chapter eleven, starting from verse twenty-three, uh, the word of God uh, clearly tells us, as Paul said, verse twenty-three. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three. He said, "For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night." in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Let's read one more time. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. So this is the reason why we uh, partake the communion or the Lord's Supper is in order to proclaim the Lord's death till He comes. So to proclaim the Lord's death till He come, till He comes. Uh, to proclaim the Lord's death till He comes, uh, there are so many reasons why. Uh, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 1, tell us about the first reason why Jesus uh, died on the cross. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, uh, Paul said as his personal experience. And this is what he said, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that 
Christ, uh, for I delivered to you, uh, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So, first reason why Christ died on the cross. And I think most believers knew this, that Christ died for our sins. Christ died for our sins, or Christ died as our substitute, or to pay the price in full. Okay? Because we are all sinners, and because we are all sinners, we cannot save our selves. So that's why uh, God sent His Son to die on our behalf to satisfy His justice. Okay? Uh, and, and His holiness. So that we who believe in Him will, uh, will, will, will no longer be condemned but be saved. Because it tells us here that uh, Christ died to save us from our Sins, and that is according to the scripture. Simply means that before Jesus Christ died on the cross, it's already been planned uh, by God even before the foundation of the world or the creation of man. So praise the Lord. Okay, so that's number one. So every time when we partake this communion, don't just eat the bread, symbolize the body of Christ, and also drink the cup, no? Uh, just for uh, just for religious uh, ritual. But think that you know that Christ died for our sins. See, uh, do it uh, with. Uh, uh, with meditation, uh, in praise, and also in worship. Hallelujah. So that's number one. But the second one that most Christian probably did not know or not given more emphasis uh, here in Second Corinthians chapter five. The second reason that. Most Christian didn't give uh, uh, give more emphasis the reason why Jesus Christ on the cross for us. Second Corinthians chapter five verse uh, fifteen, he said here, he died for all. Okay, but it's for me. Yes, Christ died for all, but it's one thing to make it personal. You can see that, that Christ died for me. Okay, so, okay. Uh, you see, he, he died. Uh, he died for all, or he died for me. Then, all. Okay, he, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So this is the reason, well, this is one of the important reasons that Jesus Christ died on the cross that we need to know. Okay? That Christ did not only die to save us from our sins, but he died for you and me so that we should no longer live for our selves. But for him who died and rose again. Now think about this. You know, in the Bible, three times, I think four times, Jesus mentioned. You could see that in the four gospels from Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and John. Four times Jesus mentioned that, 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 that he said that whoever desires. To save his life, we lose it. Whoever desires to save his life, we lose it. Whoever desires to live only for yourselves, to preserve your soul life. Jesus himself said four times, just to give an emphasis, you will lose your life. But he said, but whoever desires to lose his life for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel, you will find true life that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. 
That's why Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15, it really blessed my heart that to give us the, the reason why did Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. Yes, it is true that Christ died on the cross to save us from our sins. But here, so that we will no longer live for ourselves. To live a self-centered life. To, to, to live to exalt ourselves. To preserve our soul life. But to die. To our self-life. So that we can live for Christ. Who died and rose again. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Who loved us and gave himself for us. And if that is the way we choose to live, then we will find life. We will experience true life. A life that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Because that life is called the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are searching, looking to experience true life, as far as the word of God is concerned, you cannot find it with the things of this world. You could have all the things of this world, but without Christ, you are still dead. You could, that's why we always hear here, don't pursue happiness, pursue Jesus. Don't pursue even life, pursue Jesus. Don't pursue any satisfaction, pursue Jesus because Jesus is alone can give us true satisfaction, true fulfillment that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away so that's why for me every time we partake this communion the Lord reminded me not only 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 so that I could Partake this communion in worship, in praise, and in thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Make it personal. Make it personal. Because when you make it personal, then you will also experience the power of the cross personally. And then this was all. Lord, you died on the cross for me so that, Lord, I could no longer live for myself. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired to live for myself. Every time I choose my way, like Frank Sinatra said, I did it my way, my life became miserable. I did it my way. But thanks be to God. Because of His great love for us. Now, we will not sing that song anymore. Because the one who sang already dead. We will choose the song. Lord, thank you for, for the cross. And because of that cross, you give me your religion power. So that I could no longer live for myself. They could live for you and for the sake of the gospel. I don't know about you, but for me, every time I choose my way, I make myself miserable. But if you choose the way of Christ, which is the way of the cross, especially if you're a husband, if you choose the way of the cross to die for yourself, Sacrificially, then you will find true life in your inner man. So, this is the one of the reasons why every time we, uh, when we celebrate communion, my heart is full of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you. That because 
of your cross. Remember, the cross is the power of God and the wisdom of God. To save us from our selfish life. So when you believe and receive the cross, you will live no longer for yourselves. Because God will give you His desire and the power to live, to live only for Him and for the sake of the gospel. For the sake of our family, then you will experience true life. So that's number two. And number three, reason why Jesus Christ died on the cross. Again, that most Christian didn't give more emphasis. It's in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. And he said, in as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. Who was the power of death? Satan. And how Satan being destroyed by the death of Christ. When Christ died on the cross, he destroyed the one who have the power of death. And his name is Satan. That's why every time we can make communion, Lord, now, thank you for the cross. Because when you died on the cross, Lord, you definitely died to save me from my sins, but you destroy Satan who hold the power of death. And 14... And he said here, And release those through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. You know, by nature, all men are afraid to die. How many guys say amen to that? All men, by nature, all men are afraid to die. Because they don't know when they die where to go. They don't have any assurance. But if the cross of Christ is real into your hearts, not just like an imagination or an intellectual knowledge. The Bible says here, Jesus himself will release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to Bandage. So if the cross of Christ is truly related to your heart, you will no longer be afraid to die. That's why. And so that you could say together with Paul. For to me, to live is in Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 1, 21 and verse 23, it tells us there that to live is Christ, that only is gain, but also far better. It's far better. And Philipp- and and uh, and and First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, it tells us that if the cross of Christ is real to you, if your loved ones died, or when our fellow believers died, yes, we sorrow. We grieve because we miss them. But we will not sorrow like the world with, uh, with no hope. Because a person who believes, who truly believes, Christ as his Lord and Savior and the cross of Christ is to lead is real to him or her he could say together with Paul for to me 
to live is Christ and to die is gain and you will not sorrow or grieve as the world grieves because they have no hope of life after death but if you are in Christ every believer has a blessed hope Titus 2 verse 13 First Peter 1 Peter 1.5 it tells us living hope and that hope is not just a wishful thinking is 100% sure that's why every true believer no longer afraid to die because to die in the Lord it's gain and far better yes we sorrow because we miss them but we will not sorrow as the world without hope because like our brothers and sisters already go ahead of us right now they were in a better place than us you know in Revelation chapter 21 Apostle John could not describe heaven even Paul when God brought him to the third heaven he himself said I could not express or describe the beauty of heaven that's why some people say he have a dream or died and went to heaven and they're able to describe I don't buy that because Paul said no one could describe the beauty of heaven so some people they, have, they died and went to heaven and able to describe I don't buy that if you buy, you buy, but not me. No offense. Because Paul said in First Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 12, God brought me to the third heaven, and I could not describe it. And even Apostle John could not describe it. That's why he only described what is not in heaven. Because he, he could not describe the beauty, the grandeur of heaven. So you describe what is not in heaven. So what is not in heaven? No more tears. No more crying. What else? No more sickness. No more diseases. No more what? Arthritis. No more gout. Okay. No more death. No more crying. No more fighting. No more wars. Because in heaven, the Bible is in the presence of God is what? Is fullness of joy forevermore. That's why Paul said, encourage this word with one another. I think we need to encourage one another, right? Stop criticizing or judging one another. We are not called that. That's the work of Satan. To accuse. To discourage. The work of God is, you know, God is the God of encouragement. I'm going to say to that. So let us encourage one another. Comfort one another with God's word. And what is God's word? That if you belong to Christ, you have a blessed hope. And a living hope simply means that it's certain hundred percent. That's why... Every time when we go to the mission during the, what do you call this? The turbulence. <laughs> this is our experience with Pastor Lee every time. So, the Lord always reminded us, I'm immortal until the Lord calls me home. You know, I have three prayers from God. He said, Lord, before you call me home, Three things I pray. Don't call me home until I finish my assignment. Let me finish first my assignment from you. Number two. Lord, help me 
to obey every commands in your word. Third, Lord, help me to experience, to claim every promise of your word. That's my prayer. So every time God reminded me when there was a turbulent, I said, Lord, I think I'm not finished yet. So, so let me sleep. And God is my witness. First time in my life, for eight hours, everybody is shouting on the airplane, and then probably they are praying, all kinds of prayer probably. You know, but me, God is my witness. God me put to sleep. Like when he was in the boat. While the disciples were panicking, fearful, but Jesus was asleep. At the back of the boat. Because he knows he will not die to be drowned on water. He will die on the cross. 100% sure. That's why I said, no. These waves will not kill me. That's why I said, Lord, this turbulence make me closer to you. Sometimes it's good to have turbulence, right? Because it makes us closer to, to God. And also to reveal what is in our hearts. But thanks be to God that through the death of Christ, He did not only destroy Satan who holds the power of death, but also to release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bandage. Now we could live in complete freedom. No wonder people are early, the early believers where they were in prison, tortured, eaten by the lions, burned with fire. They are still praising the Lord. Still worshiping the Lord because they know if they die in the Lord, it's gain and far better. And not only that, because they truly believe in the Lord, His grace is sufficient to give us the strength that even people will kill us, we're still able to rejoice and give thanks. To the Lord. And I experienced that when I was in prison. When I was beaten, I experienced the joy that what the Bible is talking about. Because my prayer to the Lord, I just want this word to be real to me. No longer a memory verse, but a life verse. So God will allow us to go through circumstances in life to prove to us that what He said is true. So this one, to release those true fear of death were all their lifetime subject to one days. So if some of us are still afraid to die and not willing to die, for the sake of Christ and for the sake of the gospel, pray to God to make this to make the cross of Christ real to us. Because one of the mark that the cross of Christ is real to you, you are willing. You no longer live for yourselves, and you are not afraid to die for the sake of Christ and for the sake of the gospel. Iba naman po yung magbigti ka. Di po kasali yan dito. Okay? So, that's enough. 
because uh, because of the death of Christ, we have a blessed hope to be resurrected one day and to be with the Lord forever more. So that's our blessed and living hope, that hundred percent. That's why we can say the best is yet to come. That's what Jesus said. When you look, when you see all these things, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged, just look up. Because your redemption drawing near. So uh, another effect of the death of Christ uh, here in Galatians chapter Galatians chapter 3 Galatians chapter 3 verse uh, 13 it tells us here this, well, this is one of the reasons why Christ died f- for us and he said Christ has redeemed us. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who hung on a tree. Everyone is under curse because nobody obey the law. Our goodness is not good enough. We need the goodness of Christ. And the goodness of Christ is not just good enough, but is more than enough. For the forgiveness of our sins, for our salvation, and also for our justification. As if we never sin before God. So the reason Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hung on a tree. And verse 14 it says, another blessing, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That the blessings of Abraham might come not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. And we are Gentiles. Some of you guys say amen to that. And through Christ, through His death on the cross, if you truly believe and receive, the Bible says here, the blessing of Abraham will come upon you. Remember in Genesis chapter 12, God promised to Abraham, right? I will... Bless you. So that all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. And I will curse those who curse you. But I will bless those who bless you. I heard somebody say that the reason why America was blessed by God because He blessed Israel. But the Bible says that the true Israelites is not only the Jews, but, but the believers. So be careful. To criticize our fellow believers. Because God will vindicate that person whom you criticize. It's better to speak blessing than curse. It's better to encourage than to criticize and judge. Most people to your spouse. Bless them. Don't be like the wife of Job. The reason why Satan did not kill the wife of Job because Satan said, This woman 
can I use him when he's alive than he's dead? So, every day, see blessing to your spouse. I learned a relationship between husband and wife. Before I thought it's 50 50. But I, as I grew up, and I said, the Lord said to me, it's not 50 50, 100 percent and zero. If you want your marriage to be glorious and happy, 100 versus zero. Simply means that true love does not expect something in return. Husband, the greatest need of your wife, as the word of God say, is love. The greatest need of every wife is love. That's why God commanded, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Love your wife sacrificially. Yeah. You know, Ephesians chapter 5, right? It's four. Cleansing by the word, sanctifying, and beautifying. And, has, and wife, the greatest need of your husband is what? So then, the word of God, so don't get angry with me. And don't say it depends. <laughs> you will do this not because of your husband. Do it for the Lord. Because if you do it to your husband, you cannot do it anymore. You will always complain and murmur. And murmuring and complaining, First Corinthians chapter 10, is death. The angel of death will come upon you. That's what the Bible says. Do all things without murmuring and complaining. But God loves a cheerful giver. Shifting of focus. Do it out of love for the Lord and out of His mercy unto you. Cry out to God and God will give you His desire and the power. But na po tayo sa marriage ito? Curse of the law. So that's the greatest need. And and it's properly speaking to my heart. That's why I always say to my wife, just pray for me. Because I cannot do this in my strength. Just pray for me. That I could love you. As Christ loved the church. Hindi dahil gusto pa namin mag-anak. One for us. One is enough. It's only we have only one begotten son. Probably uh, spiritual children. Okay, that I could love her, not just by mere words, but I could love her sacrificially. I'm willing to die to myself. That's why happy wife, happy life. So, think about that. The greatest need of your wife and the greatest need of your husband and as far as ministry is concerned, the primary ministry of a wife and husband, Lord, vertical, right? Then horizontal. And the primary ministry of the wife is to support her husband. Pray. Tagalogin ko na lang kasi limited edition ko eh. If there is one person that I could give thanks she can to God is my wife. I thank God for her patience, of her love, of her loving support. 
And I, the reason why I'm still here to stand, because of God, of course, but because of her too. 100% she supported me. And God is my witness. I will say, Lord, thank you for the perfect gift to me. For his support, for his love, for his patience, for his understanding. Okay, let's move on. It says here, uh, upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Because oftentimes when we talk about the blessings of God to Abraham, usually it stops on health and wealth. But here it tells us the primary blessing of God to Abraham is more than that. God gave him what? Descendants. But he didn't see his descendants while he's alive. It's only one son, Isaac. He, God promised him that God will give him descendants as the stars of heaven and the sun in the seashore. But it's more than that. It says here that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. For me, the great blessing is the promise of the Holy Spirit that could be received by faith through Christ. Now in the New Testament, we receive the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit abide in us. How many of you can say that we need the Holy Spirit? The Bible says, if the Holy Spirit did not dwell in you, you are not belong to Christ. The reason why we belong to Christ and the proof of that because we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit called the indwelling Holy Spirit. And not only that, because and we have the Holy Spirit, then the Word of God will be true to us in Acts 20 verse 35. What is that? That we may be able to support the weak or to encourage the weary and to become a channel of blessing. And the Bible says, or Jesus himself said, that it is more blessed to what? To give than to receive. So if you receive God's blessing, you are blessed. Some guys say me to that. But if you choose to be a channel of blessing, you are what? More? Bless. San gusto natin doon? More? Bless. But the only way to be a channel of blessing, we need the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit is available to us because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. So, beloved, so, Every time we partake the Lord's Supper, like today, just remember this. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3, that Christ died. Make it personal for my sin. 2 Corinthians 5, 15, that Christ died for me. So that I no longer live for myself, but live only for Him who died and rose again. Or who loved me and gave Himself for me. And third, Christ died to destroy Satan who hold the power of death and to release me from the bondage of the fear of death so that we can say with, with confidence like Paul, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die 
is gained or far better. And when our loved ones died ahead of us, we will not grieve or sorrow as the world grieve with no hope. Because right now, like my mom, my dad, my sister, and my brother. Thank God, because my prayer, Lord, I pray for the salvation of my family. But I don't know. But God orchestrated that day that I could go back to the Philippines. And I don't know how to start. I said, Lord, I don't know. My wife said, you have to share the gospel. I don't know. And God make a way. God make a way. For the first time, my brother said to me, sa Tagalog, bakit sa iba nagmimisa ka? Sa amin hindi ka magmimisa. Magmisa ka sa amin. So the first mass, I shared the gospel. I shared the gospel about two hours. But my brother said, more. <laughs> Sa katuloy ko, minuto lang kapatid. Because God ordained that day that my family will be saved to fulfill His promise. For If you believe, all your household will be saved. And I pray, Lord, before you call them home, ibalato mo sila sa akin. Save them. Amen. And God is my witness. Because they accepted the Lord. Yes, I grieve to the death of my loved ones, but I don't grieve like the world with no hope. Because right now, they enjoy Jesus more than us. And remember this in Galatians chapter 3. List that personal that Christ redeemed me from the curse of the law. So you're no longer under curse. That's why in Christ there is no more condemnation. I'm going to say to that. But celebration of His grace, goodness, and His mercy. And lastly, we receive great blessing under the new covenant, the Holy Spirit. As the mark that we belong to Christ and also as God's power to enable us to be a blessing to our family. So that when you pray, God will tell you, are you willing to be an answer to your prayer? That's the question. I know that you are praying for your loved ones to be saved. Question, are you willing to be an answer to your prayers? If you say yes, God will provide everything that you need. He will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Just say yes. Yes, Lord. And you will be amazed because God will make a way where there seems there is no way. And you will go forth with thanksgiving in your hearts. With praise, Lord, thank you so much, so God, for allowing me to be an answer to my prayers for the salvation of our family. Beloved, Jesus is coming anytime soon. And anytime soon, God will call us home. So take this opportunity. Do business of Christ before He comes. Let's go. Start in your knees or on your knees first. Tuhurin mo muna bago ka umalis. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord, 
seal this word of God into our hearts. Apply this truth, Lord, into our hearts. I know, Lord, my word is limited. But your grace, your love, your mercy is unlimited, O God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for us. And today, as we celebrate communion, of what you have done on the cross. Thank you for the Holy Spirit to remain to remind us afresh and to make this truth, Lord, alive into our hearts so that when we partake this communion, we will partake this in worship, in praise, in thanksgiving to Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And